Hands on the bit. Since on the bed is specified. Sense on the bit. You on YouTube that one of these days that you will be physically here amongst us. One of these days, whether you are here in Barbados, whether you are off of the island, we pray that one of these days your goal is to visit Revival Time Assembly.
to physically be among us. So we give God thanks for each and every one of you for keeping you during this past week. We don't know what this week was for you, but only God knows what this week was for you. And we give God thanks that he has brought you yeah. to this very day, to hallelujah. this very hour, to this very minute, to this very second. Oh, hallelujah, you, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Let's stand hallelujah. this morning as we open hallelujah. in a word of prayer. It's so nice to see each and every one of you so early. And we know that the others are on their way. And we pray that God would bring them safely in amongst us father we give you thanks for this day this is the day that you have made let us rejoice and be glad in it we choose to rejoice we don't want the rocks and the stones to cry out for us we don't want the rocks and the stones to worship you we don't want the rocks and the stones to praise you we have a mouth we have a tongue we have teeth and we give god thanks dear god that we can put these things together dear god and lift up your name and worship you those that don't have breath, they can't worship you. So let us, dear God, focus on you. Focus on the goodness of God this morning so that we don't rob you of what you truly deserve, dear God, because you deserve all glory, all honor, and all praise. We were created to praise you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We pray, dear God, that this morning's service will be a blessing to some soul here this morning. We lift up your name, dear God, so that men and women will be drawn on to you. We don't take any credit, any glory for ourselves, dear God, but we put self on sight, dear God, so that you will be elevated, so that you will be lifted up, dear God, so that you will receive all glory and all honor and all praise father even now those that are on their way kiss and their sex cover them with your precious blood dear god father even now we give you thanks dear god for this service dear god so at the end of the day we will say we made a great choice being in your presence yet another sunday we started the week on the right foot dear god we give you thanks we don't know what this day holds we don't know what this week holds we don't know what the rest of this month holds we don't know what the rest of this year holds but our hope and our trust is in jehovah jireh our provider we give you thanks in jesus name amen and amen and amen at this time we will now turn over the service to our dear sister pearl sister paula she is our worship leader this morning so we now turn over the service to her hallelujah praise the lord a blessed good morning to all those who are in zoom on zoom and those who are in the sanctuary we just want to give god thanks and praise for his goodness and his mercy that he has bestowed upon us this morning we i just want to for a minute remind us that who is all about remind myself god is all about you when the, all the music has faded and all has been swept away lord it's all about you hallelujah Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. When the music fades and all is swept away and I simply come Longing just to break something that's the world that will bless your heart. I'll bring you more than a song, for a song in itself is not what you have required. 
search much deeper within to the way things appear. You're looking into my heart, and I'm coming back to the heart of worship. It's all about you. When it's all about you, Jesus, I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I've made it. When it's all about you, when it's all about you, Jesus. When the music fades, and all is stripped away, and I simply come. The longing best to pray, something that the world has to bless your heart. I'll bring you more than a song, for a song in itself. It's not what you have required. You search much deeper within to the way things are you. You're looking into my heart. I'm coming back to the heart of worship. It's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. And I'm sorry, Lord, for this day I've made it. And it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the day I've made it. And it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. It's all about you. It's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. It's all about you. It's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. It's all about you. It's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. Hallelujah. It's all about you, Jesus. It's all about you. Hallelujah. God, God, we are sorry for the thing that we've made it, Lord. And we recognize today, God, it's all about you. About you, it's all about you, Jesus. Hallelujah! Praise the Lord. Now, Sister Michelle is going to come and minister to us. Praise the Lord. Blessed good morning again to each and every one of you. It is so good to see our assembly pa and our special visitors this morning. You look really lovely. Thank you for coming into Revival Time Assembly. And I pray that each and every one of you will be blessed this morning. We give God thanks for bringing you here safely. Hallelujah. And you look lovely this morning. Amen. Amen. All oh, hail the power of Jesus name All oh, hail the power of Jesus name Let angels cross before Bring forth the royal diadem And crown him, crown him Chosen seed of Israel with me as the 
King of kings and Lord of lords. Hallelujah. Because Jehovah is his name. And we want to welcome him into this place this morning. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. your hands. Feel free to dance. Those in the house can get your flies because we come to worship all this morning. Get your fly, wave your flies, clap your hand and give your dance unto the King of King and Lord of Lords. Hallelujah. Jehovah is your name. We are in your 
Hallelujah. 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 We're standing here only because God. Hallelujah. You have made a way, Lord. And we're standing here. Only because you made a way. I was standing there. Only because you made a way. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 We bless the name of Lamb of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Psalm 67 tells us and says, the psalmist is saying, God be merciful unto us and bless us and cause his face to shine upon us that thy way may be known upon the earth, thy saving health among all the nations. Let the people praise thee, O God. Let all the people praise thee. Oh, let the nations be glad and sing for joy. For thou shalt judge the people righteously and govern the nations upon the earth. Let the people praise thee, O God. Let all the people praise thee. Then shall the earth yield her increase, and God, even our own God, shall bless us. God shall bless us, and all the ends of the earth shall fear him. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. I like it where the ver um, verse 3 says, Let the people praise thee, O God. Let all the people praise thee. Hallelujah. And this morning, that is what we come here to do. We come here this morning to give God praise and we give God thanks for his goodness and his mercy. This song that we are going to minister to you now. Now, before we start, I would like to request. Now, we are not doing this for Pearl. We are doing it for God. And it says, praise the Lord. And the psalm just tells us, you know, what will happen when we praise the Lord. And those who plant, we want that the earth yield her increase, you know. And we want God to bless us, you know. So, as long as you can move this morning... We want you to move. We want you to clap your hand. We want you to stomp your feet, right? This song is a song of rejoicing to God. It says, praise the Lord. We have no reason not to praise the Lord for the mere fact that we are standing here today. We have all reasons to praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I 
our praise plan outnumbered. Praise men surrounded. As praise is the water, my enemies drowning. Our praise in the valley, our praise on the mountain. I praise when I'm sure. I praise when I'm doubting. I praise when I'm numbered. I praise when surrounded. Cause praise is the water. My enemies drowning. As long as I'm breathing, I've got the reason to pray. Oh, my soul. Praise, praise the Lord. Oh, my soul. I praise when I feel it. I praise when I don't. I praise because I know you are still in control. I praise is a weapon. It's more than a song. My praise is a shout that brings Jericho down. As long as I breathe it, I've got a reason to praise the Lord. My God is alive, so how can I keep it inside? I've got to praise the Lord, oh my soul. Praise the Lord, oh my soul. I praise God you serve me. I praise God you reign. Faithful. I praise cause you're true. I praise cause there's no one but he greater than you. As long as I breathe it, I've got a reason to Let everything that have breath praise the Lord. I need everybody's help, right? Yes. yes. Let everything, as long as you are breathing this morning, yes. praise yes. the Lord. So we go. Let everything that have breath sing praise, praise the Lord. Lord. Praise the Lord. Let everything. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let everything. Hallelujah. God, I pray. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let everything. God, I pray. Praise the Lord. Let everything. Praise the Lord. Let everything. God, I pray. God, I pray. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let everything. Let everything. God, I pray. God, I pray. Praise the Lord! Praise the 
I won't be quiet. My God is alive. How can I keep it inside? I won't be quiet. I won't be quiet. My God is alive. How can I keep it inside? I thought to praise the Lord, oh my soul. of the Lord. He is worthy to be praised. He is worthy to be lifted up. Praise his name this morning. It's due unto him. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord, oh my soul. Hallelujah. God, we give you the praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, we give you all the praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We praise you. We praise you, we honor you, oh my God. Praise you in the morning, praise you in the evening, praise you all day long. We give you praise, we give you praise. God, hallelujah. Even if you can't stand, you should be praising God, hallelujah. Even if you can't wave your hand, you can praise God, 
There's so much to praise God for. Hallelujah. So many things are going on around the world. But God has spared us so much here in Barbados. We need to praise Him. We need to give Him time. We need to honor Him for who He is. Hallelujah. How can we be silent at this time? When we know that our God, our God, our King, is alive. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. We thank you, Jesus. Oh, oh, oh. Jesus, you are Lord. 
and every knee must bow and every tongue must confess that Jesus, you are Lord and you are God of my day. Cause every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus, you are Lord and Jesus, you are Lord. Every knee shall bow. In heaven and in earth and under the earth shall bow and declare that Jesus, you are Lord, you are Lord, and you are God, and you are God Almighty, you are God Almighty, you are God Almighty, you are worthy of praise. You are worthy of praise. You are worthy of honor. You are worthy of the glory. Oh God. So we bring every principality and every power under the authority of the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And right here in this sanctuary. Or on YouTube or on Facebook or wherever someone may be Hallelujah. taking a view of what's happening here in our midst. We declare that Jesus is Lord. We declare that Jesus is Lord. And anything that seeks to exalt itself against the knowledge of Jesus the Christ of so God. We pull down in Jesus' name. We bring it under the authority in Jesus' name. Uh, we put it as a footstool. And we bring it under the authority of the name of Jesus. Father, this morning, even though I want to pray for these girl guides and these brownies and who have come into our midst this morning, oh God. Lord, you know each, of, each one of them by their name. There are too many. My, my mind will not remember all of the names. But God, you know every single name. You know every single circumstance that they all face, oh God. God, you know what's going on in the household of every child that's represented here, oh God. Of every adult that's represented here, oh God. And because we know that you are God and you are Lord of all, we release you to go and to work in their lives today. To work in their circumstances today, oh God. But I think that I pray today that these beautiful young ladies, oh God. These young ladies that you have brought into our mess. That you will preserve them. The enemy will not in any way destroy them. The enemy will not in any way steal from them. But Father God, we speak life over them today. In the name of Jesus, Father God. Father, each and every one of them, God, you saw before they were born. And you set the day when they will be born. Our Lord, in eternity you set aside the mother and the father, O oh God, who will come together to bring them to this earth. And because you have set that in place in time and eternity, Father God, we take the authority you've given us today and we declare that all of them will walk in the purpose for which you've called them to, O oh God. They will grow into men and women, O oh God, who will walk in the purpose and the plan that you have for their lives today. But even now at their young and tender age, reveal yourself to them. Show them a, a glimpse, oh God, of who you are. Father, the boy Samuel, he didn't know your voice, but you saw his heart. You looked into his heart, and you saw that he was able to receive the word of God. So, Father, look into the hearts of all of these young brownies today, this morning. So beautifully dressed in their uniforms. And Father God, we pray today that you will look into their hearts today. 
And you will speak into their lives today. Now they will hear your voice, Father God. And Father Lord, I pray that you will put Eli's in their life who will help them to understand that God is calling them. That God is speaking to them. That God wants to, to speak a word through their life that will change this generation in which they live. You did it for Samuel, oh God. And you can do it for each and every one of these children. And when my Samuel was a boy, and these are all girls, yet, yeah, Lord, with you, there's no gender. But with you, you just see the hearts of these, these children today. So bless them, we pray today. Cover them, we pray today. Protect them, Lord, Father God. But above everything else, speak into their hearts. Let them hear you. Let them hear you. Let them hear the voice of the Lord. Now that voice is different from the voice of their mother and their father and their grandmother. Let them know that it's a, a different voice that is speaking to them, giving them direction, giving them guidance, giving them a glimpse of what you have in store for their life. We pray today in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We give God thanks this morning. We give him praise. So good that so many of you have come into the house of the Lord this morning for this time where we will come together before the Almighty God and we will minister to him as he will minister unto us this morning. As you can clearly see, we have joined with us to worship with us. Um, it's a group here from they're camping at Pali office, and they desire to come and to worship with us this morning. So I'm going to invite the leader to come um, this morning and to just say a few words this morning. Um, you can come and, and just greet the congregation, share a little bit about what's happening with this lovely group of young of young people. Hello. Good morning, everyone. We are happy to be here this morning to worship with you. We are from the Hinesbury Primary School. Good morning, everyone. We are happy to be here to worship with you. We're camping at the Pawi Retreat Center down the road. We are from the Hinesbury Primary School, and we have brought the units of three packs, 52nd, 103rd, and 124th with one blossom unit. Currently at camp, we have a total of 39 girls. We have 29 Brownies and eight blossoms along with 10 adults. As a Girl Guide Association, with our motto being be prepared and our promise that we make the promise represents three factors or three areas. So when we make our salute, to make our promise, we are promising service to God, service to mankind, and service to the community. So by fulfilling our visit here this morning, we are fulfilling one part of our threefold promise, which is promise to God and duty to God. The purpose of this activity and our camp is to assist with character building and self-confidence of the young girls, which the ages are five to nine. The Blossoms start at five years old, complete their role at six years old, and Brownies start from seven until 11 years old. We also try to encourage the girls to, be, to build friendships with each other while working on their interest badges. 
to teach basic survival skills and encourage self-discipline and importance of perseverance. Our theme at this camp is the three R's, which we're looking at being reliable, being respectful, being responsible, and being resourceful. So on this, these four captions, the girls are in four groups representing each R, which we call Camp 4 R's, and they will be able to work with each other and develop their social skills working with each other. You might see the girls being a bit sleepy and drowsy because they went to bed very late last night. We are breaking camp this evening, and we had an uneventful camp as usual. Thanks be to God. And we also had the security of the police service doing their routine surveillance around the clock. So I want to thank you all for inviting us to worship with you as we continue to praise the Lord. Amen. 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 Okay, our scripture reading is taken from Isaiah 43, verses 14 to 21, and it will be read by Sabrina Callender, one of our senior brownies. Isaiah 43, verses 14 to 21. Thus saith the Lord, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, for your sake I have sent to Babylon, and have brought down all their nobles and Chaldeans, who, whose cry is in the ships. I am the Lord, your Holy One, and the the creator of Israel, your king. Thus saith the Lord, which maketh a way in the sea, and a path in the mighty waters, which bringeth forth the chariot and horse, the army and the power. They shall lie down together. They shall not rise. They are extinct. They are quenched as tow. Remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Ye, sh ye, not, know, ye not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. The beast of the field shall honor me the dragons and the owls, because I gave the the wa I gave waters in the wilderness and rivers in the desert to to give drink to my people, my chosen. This people have I formed from for my, myself. They shall shew forth my praise. Here ends the Bible reading. Amen. Thank you. Praise the Lord. We thank God that we are allowed to, to graciously host this group of young 
young ladies and I'm conscious of the times that we're living in how the enemy is knowing that his time is short he's on the rampage and trying to destroy to kill and to steal and in some ways I don't get vexed with the enemy you know because he understands his job he knows what his job description is and he's intent on doing his job to the best of his ability hmm. which is to kill to steal hmm. and to destroy hmm. but thanks be to god that jesus said but i have come that you might have life and you might have it more abundantly. So I am enlisted in the army of Jesus Christ. The devil got his army. Mm. Jesus got his army. Mm. But I don't know about you, but I am enlisted in the army of Jesus Christ. Mm. And this army is an army that is victorious. This is an army that has proven its ability mm. to win. Mm. And I am part of that army. Hallelujah. I want to invite you also to be part of that army if you are not as yet. Mm. Come into the army because Jesus is ready to mobilize his army to go into enemy territory and to take back what was stolen. You see, the word of God says that the earth is the Lord's Amen. and the fullness thereof. What does that mean? Everything. If the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof, doesn't it all belong to our God? Doesn't it all belong to him? So if we are in his army, that means that we are on a victorious army. The passage that was read will form part of my short exhortation this morning to, to us as a, as a congregation. The short exhortation, the title is the vision is for an appointed time. And I want you to turn your attention to the book of Habakkuk, Habakkuk chapter 2. And we're going to read the first four verses of Habakkuk. And as the Spirit of the Lord will allow me today, I'll share a few thoughts that I believe the Holy Spirit is stirring us, stirring us to. Last week, we were instructed of the Holy Spirit to be still. Hmm. To be still and know that I am God. In our preparation for worship on Wednesday, the Holy Spirit led us to the reading of 2 Chronicles chapter 20. And in that, and in that second book of Chronicles chapter 20, there's a relate, it is related of the event where there was a great army that came against the children of Judah. And Jehoshaphat called together the people of Judah and they went before the Lord. And two significant things I want, we don't have time to look at it, but in 2 
Chronicles chapter 20, where you get go home, you can you can read it. But there are two significant things I want to bring our attention to before we read, before we read Habakkuk. Is that Jehoshaphat in recognizing that the army of the that had came against him was so much so great. It was bigger than what he had. It was greater than his resources. We sang today. Now we're standing here only because you made a way. You move mountains. Hallelujah. You cause walls to fall with your power. Perform miracles. And there is nothing. That's impossible. And we're standing here only because you made a way. So when Jehoshaphat looked at the army, he playing that one for me, okay? When Jehoshaphat looked at the army that was coming against him, he said, This little small army that I have, we have no might against that large army that have coming up against us. And Jehoshaphat said, Oh Lord, we don't know what to do. But our eyes are fixed on you. We don't know what to do, God. But our eyes are fixed on you. And when he looked at his natural resources that were at his disposal, he said, God, I don't have any might. And when he went before God, the Lord sent a word. And the Lord said, Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. The Lord says, You don't have to fight. But hear my instructions and follow my instructions. I sense that across this congregation on YouTube, on Facebook, might be one, maybe two, maybe a bit more. That is like something is coming against you recently, and you are like, "Where is this coming from? Why, why, why? All of a sudden, this thing is against me, and you don't know what to do." I want to tell you to do like Jehoshaphat. So God. I don't know what to do, but my eyes are fixed upon you. Father, now, even now, let the words of my mouth, let the meditation of my heart, Father, let whatever you will choose to speak to your people today, let it bring enlightenment, let it bring change, let it bring transformation. Above everything else, Father God, let it be clear what you are saying to your people, O oh God. Hallelujah. And Father, let he that have an ear, let him hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying Amen. to the church of Jesus Christ. Amen. Habakkuk chapter 1, chapter 2, sorry, verse 1 says, I stand upon my watch and set upon the tower and will watch to see what he will say unto me. And what I shall answer when I am reproved. This is the King James Version. And the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision. And make it plain upon tablets. That he may run that read of it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time. But at the end, it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it. Because it will surely come. It will not tarry. Behold, his soul which is lifted up is, is not upright in him, but a just shall live by his faith. Mm. The Lord says to Habakkuk, 
The vision that I show you, write it down. I make it plain. Write it down on tablets. In other words, don't just keep it in your head. Is there anybody like me today that don't write down things? Mm-hmm. I trust my I trust my my brain. I trust my memory, but I've discovered it's not as good as it used to be. But I want to encourage us when God speaks to us, write it down. Amen. There's some people who write every single thing. They write out notepads, many notepads in a few months. And I'm like, how are you writing so much? And I look at my same notepad, same size as theirs, and I know what page three or four. But, but we are cautioned today that when God speaks to us, write it down. Make it clear what he is, writing, what he is saying. And I know sometimes it's not always convenient to write it down, but most of us got one of these things. I got Samsung. I don't know how, how iPhones is me. But Samsung got in its delivery package something called notes, Samsung notes. Write it there. Huh. And the reason why God is saying to the prophet, write it, is because it is important. Because he wants it to be clear that what he has spoken is captured. Because for the vision is for an appointed time. But at the end, it will speak and not lie. In other words, it shall come to pass. The New Living Translation translate verse 3 like this. This vision is for a future time. It describes the end and it will be fulfilled. If it seems slow in coming, wait patiently for it. For it will surely take place. It will not be delayed. That seems like a little contradiction there, right? Even though it's slow in coming, wait for it. It will not be delayed. Then he warns us, look at the proud. They're trusting themselves. Their lives are crooked. But the righteous will live by their faithfulness to God. Hebrews 11 verse 1 says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. It says, it is the evidence of things not seen. For by it, the elders obtain a good report. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by God, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. Now walk with me through this for a few moments. When you have a vision, can you see it? Can you touch it? Can you feel it? Now what's the difference between a dream and a vision? So we can put it in simple language. Uh, a dream is something that you will lie in your bed and you will have a, an account of some things that maybe happened before or something that's going on around you. Maybe you went to your belly too full. And... But a vision now speaks of something that is God is trying to reveal to you through your time of sleeping. Now, a vision don't necessarily 
have to be something that you get where you dream. But it could be something that God has shown you that he wants to do in the future, in your life, in your family life. So he gives you a perspective of it. Now, if we don't have a vision of where we want to go, we will lose our way. Let me use this as an example. We set up to go from here in Maxwell to Bridgetown. We are going to what used to be called KF Shepherd, they now call it Bridgetown Duty Free. So we are going to that location. And we have some options from here. We can go through Silver Hill, go up Silver Hill, go down by Popular, down the highway. We can go from here, we can go down Top Rock, go down um, World and Hastings, and we can go into town. But in between where we settle on our journey, so our vision is to go to Bridgetown, go to um, Bridgetown Duty Free, and we're going to pick up something or we're going to meet someone there. As you are journeying on your way, you, you still have to make choices, right? As you're journeying on your way, when you get to Top Rock Roundabout, you have to make a choice. Shall I go left? Shall I keep straight? When you get down to Gaffrey Sobers Roundabout, you have, to, you have to also make some choices as to where you're going. Now, if you have no idea where Bridgestone Duty Free is, and you get to Garfield Sober's Roundabout. Now, there are one, two, three roads. If you have no idea where you're going, how would you decide which is the right road? How would you decide which is the right road to get you to Bridgestone Duty Free? And you don't have a tour guide with you. What, what would be your reference? You got a phone. Hmm. You got a phone. And your phone has on it something we call GPS. Google Maps. When you get to that location, you have to make choices. So in our life, God gives us a vision. Hmm. God gives us a glimpse of where he wants to take us. But sometimes we have the phone in our pocket. We're not sure exactly where we want to go, but we don't refer to the one who knows the map. And we presume, okay, God, you can just take us down the road. And God will take you down the road. But if God has already given you a tool to help you. Now, if the person got to get three sobers roundabout. And they take what they call the one, two, three, the third exit. And follow. You know where they will end? Back here. And sometimes that's what we do as children of God. We get to crossroads in our lives and we say, you know what? Um, I feel this one looks like the best spot, you know. We begin to rely on our own understanding and we begin to make divergence. And we ask God wanting you to get to Bridgestone in 15, 20 minutes. Because you fail to consult with the map, with the one who knew, who knows the path to get there, when you got to Garfield Sobers Roundabout, 
you slip through Sarger Village. And you're going long. Right? And then you meet a mall. And you say, but what does mall means? And you stop in that mall to check out where it is. And all of this time, you are missing out on where God has sent you because you fail to consult with God. How we consult with him? Regular prayer. Regular reading of the word. Regular fellowshipping together with your brothers and your sisters. Because then together we can look at what God is saying and where he wants to take us. No, everybody's mission is not to get to duty free, Bridgestone duty free. Some people God is sending down to spike stone. Hmm. Some people he's sending down Bathsheba. But the fact is that God is sending all of us somewhere to fulfill a purpose and a plan that he has for our lives. So there's a vision. And then let's look at that portion that we read. That the young lady read so beautifully for us this morning. Isaiah 43. And today I just want to kind of lay a foundation on the fact that God has in all of us Give, has given all of us a vision and it will come to pass. So, chapter 43. I'm going to read from verse 18. He says, but forget all that. It is nothing compared to what I am going to do. I am about to do something new. See, I have already begun. Do you not see it? I will make a pathway through the wilderness. And I will create rivers in the dry wasteland. The wild animals in the fields will thank me. The jackals and the owls, too, for giving them water in the desert. Yes, I will make rivers in the dry wastelands so my chosen people can be refreshed. I have made Israel for myself, and they will someday honor me before the world. Can I substitute in verse 21? Revival time for Israel. I have made revival time assembly for myself. And, and they will someday honor me before the whole world. Now I'm not creating heresy here, yeah? Because the Bible is quite clear that all of us who are called as children of God... We are the spiritual Israel. Israel was a nation that God has chosen in the earth. So what I'm saying to you today is that God has created a revival time assembly for a specific purpose. God had, could have given us a small corner in Maxwell where we had 600, 6,000 square feet, enough to put our church on and to satisfy our congregation of less than 100. But God has looked into all eternity and he said, you see that spot there in Maxwell, that nearly three acres of land, I want that for my name to be put on it. 
And when God says, I want that spot to put my name upon it, God says, no, I will look for a man who is willing to walk in faith before me to bring that to pass. And God looked. And he found a man called Basil Clark. I can't remember his middle name. And Basil Clark at the time was an abundant life assembly. And Basil Clark was at the time a pastor at at abundant life assembly. So he was in a place of some comfort. He was in a place of some stability. Abundant life assembly at the time was one of the biggest churches in Barbados. And God chose that man. And God says, does he have enough faith to walk before me and to do what is necessary to start this? I don't know. I didn't have a chance to sit down. I can't tell you I had a chance to sit and chat with the late Reverend Basil Clark. He told me this story. But I was around here for about 20 years now. And what I understood is that when God gave him the vision, he stepped out in faith. Now, some people were here longer than me. He stepped out in faith. I understood that what he did was he sold his home. To buy into the vision that God had given to him. What great sacrifice. If God choose you and give you a vision, are you willing to sell your house? No. He had a wife. And he had a young son. Any man who will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. My challenge to you today is for what God has shown you that he wants to do. Are you willing to give up? The things that bring you comfort, the things that you have worked so hard for up to this point. To follow the vision that God has called you, has revealed to you. Basil Clark was willing to do it. And God connected him with the man who owned the land. I remember, can't remember where he was, but I remember they were, they were having a crusade in Austin just before. And I remember these words he said. I didn't used to come to church. I used to be at People's Cathedral then. I remember these words he says, uh, Maxwell Great House is no bigger going to become Maxwell Greater House. Uh, it's a place where rasters and thieves used to live, but now the, near, the house, this will become the house of the Lord. That was over 30 something years ago. Those words stick with my head. I can't even remember the occasion. But I can remember him standing. I can't remember if it was at People's Cathedral or wherever he was. But he said those words. I grew up in Kayville just up the road, yeah? So I knew about Maxwell Great House. And Maxwell Great House was not a place that you wanted to be found in the night time. Because there were some strange spirits that were operating here that were not holy. But God chose a man who was willing to say, I will walk by faith before you. And he says, though I tarry, it shall come to pass. And so 30 something years on now, we've taken possession of the land, but we don't own the land. We've taken possession of it, the late Reverend Basil Clark was able to negotiate with the owner, Clifford Ram Sharam, giving you some names that I know. And they were, to, they were able to agree 
a price and agree a rental and agree and they make some agreements but it tarried it tarried those who have been here from the beginning um i see our our sister maureen she was here she's one of the people who were here from the beginning she could give you a little more story she actually wrote a documentary about revival time assembly which we will make available so that everybody understands the history but i feel like today the spirit of the lord want us to rehearse that before us today to understand what his plan and his purpose is to understand that he was given a vision for this house that though it tarry it shall come to pass but we must wait patiently he tell us last week stand still be still and know that i am god be still and know that i am god take some time to make sure that you are not being distracted by everything that's going on around you and remember that i am the same god who 30 something years ago said i have chosen this land to put my name upon it and from this place my name will be glorified so 20 something years ago when i came here this place was still a strange place to come in the night although it was a church i can personally testify you sometimes I wanted to run to be honest sometimes they went in that little room behind there and there were some there was the presence of some strong men hmm. if you don't believe in spirits up to you but i know there was the presence of some strong men and you feel like you want to run but then you have to remind yourself great is he that is in me that he that is in the world and you have to remind yourself that if this be the house of God, if any other spirit but the spirit of the living God is in it, that spirit is trespassing. Now over the years, we have engaged in spiritual warfare. We have engaged in times of prayers and prayer and worship and fasting. No, this place has such a peaceful presence over it. totally different but that didn't come just so remember what i tell you the enemy understands his job his job is to kill to steal and to destroy and he has been given innumerable demons evil spirits to work with him so some of them because there were other persons operating other than in the name of the lord on these grounds before those spirits believe they have a right to this place they have a right to this place but how many of you know that when god says this place is mine and i am establishing my name on it that everybody that is there is a trespasser and because god has placed his name upon a revival time assembly although the vision may have tarried about everything that god wants to do i want to tell you today it shall surely come to pass I can wrap up this morning by let's just start to take a little glimpse at turn with me to Genesis 37. Genesis 37. So help me there so we can read together. We can talk about a man called Joseph. Joseph was a man of visions. King James Version, we want to look at. We there are, if you got your Bibles, while well, well, the multimedia bring up. Genesis 37. My, my version has the New Living Translation, but I want to read it in King James Version so we all can follow. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna feed this into... 
the closing. So Genesis 37, the Bible says that Joseph, who was one of Israel's sons, was a dreamer. Verse 3 says, Now Israel loved Joseph more than all his children because he was a son of his old age and he made him a coat of many colors. And when his brethren saw that their father loved him more than all their brethren, they hated him. I could not speak peaceably upon him. And Joseph dreamed a dream. And he told it to his brethren. And they hated him yet the more. He said unto them, Here, I pray you this dream that I have. For behold, we were binding sheaves in the field. And lo, my sheaves rose up and also stood upright. And behold, your sheaves stood round about and made obeisance to my sheep. And his brethren said to him, Shall thou indeed reign over us? Or oh, shall thou indeed have dominion over us? And they hated him yet the more for his dreams and for his words. In other words, as a Belgian will tell you, use a little upstart. You little upstart to come and tell us that we, all of us, older than you, bigger than you, stronger than you, and we're going to bow down to you. What are you talking about? Because you're his daddy, favorite boy? That's the kind of conversations we Belgians would have had. And if you have brothers like my, who, my older brothers, they would put two slaps from his head, right? And tell him, boy, go arrest yourself. That's what the big brothers would do. And the verse 9 says, And he dreamed yet another dream. And told it to his brethren. I said, Behold, I have dreamed a dream more, another one. And behold, the sun and the moon and the eleven stars made obeisance to me. And he told it to his father and to his brethren. And his father rebuked him and said unto him, What is this dream that thou hast dreamed? Shall I and thy mother and thy brethren indeed come to bow themselves to thee in the earth? The vision did not make sense. If you look at it in the natural. This little upstart boy saying that he dreamed that even his parents are going to bow to him. Disrespectful youngster. His father rebuked him. But they didn't stop the vision from being true. What God showed Joseph was a glimpse of what was going to happen to the children of Israel. You all know the story. And the Bible says, the just shall live by faith. And God took Joseph. Joseph, maybe because he was a little upstart and they didn't know what to keep and what to speak. And that's a lesson for all of us to learn. There's some things that God will reveal to you then for you to go and tell everybody. It's not for you to tell everybody, for you to do like Mary. Ponder those things in your heart. And hold them between you and God. Because if you tell the wrong people at the wrong time what God says that he wants to do, they will discourage, rebuke, or throw you out. And that might cause you to lose your power. So let that be a lesson for all of us. There's some things that God speaks to us that are for our ears only. And as you pray and you seek him, if he tell you, well, well you could probably go and share with Sister Pearl, but not nobody else. Share with your wife and not nobody else. Let him tell you. But don't feel because he showed it to you that it's for everybody's ears. In this time and in this season, we have got to be still. I know that I am God. We've got to hear God speak clearly for us. And here's where I want to. Here's where I want to finish off today. It says, The just shall live by faith. Hebrews 11, 
22. Hebrews 11, 22. Here's what the word of God says. It was by faith that Joseph, when he was about to die, said confidently that the people of Israel will leave Egypt. He commanded them take his bones with them when they left. You see, the vision was for an appointed time that Joseph saw. And it was many years afterwards that the vision was actually realized. And in that process, Joseph had to go into the pit and in the prison. He had to go through a period for God to prepare him, for him to understand then the fullness of the vision. So when they came to him and they bowed to him, it wasn't now from a sense of, did I tell you that you all were going to bow to me? That was not his response because he understood that the almighty God had given him something that was bigger than him. It was bigger than him. It was not about him. But because he lacked the experience, he felt it was about me. But it was not about him. It was about what God was planning to do in his kingdom. And when God called the Reverend Basil Clark, it wasn't about Reverend Basil Clark. It's about what God was planning to do in his kingdom through this spot that he's put us on. And it's what God has planned to do to each and every one of us that he has brought to this spot. To work together. Now, Revival Time Assembly is far from a perfect church. All you visitors don't think that this is the best church. It has its problems. We have some things that are, that are, we have some disagreements. We have some things that we're still working through. It is not a perfect place, but it does not stop God from establishing his perfect vision. And working out his perfect plan. Because God will do what he has to do. And he will ship. So the Reverend Basil Clark was not able to complete the journey. He was not able to complete the journey. Uh, the, the Reverend Chris Broadbrook came. And he was with us for a while. And then the Reverend John Ford was here. And now I am here. Some of us left and some of us come back. Some of us gone. Some of us gone forever. Some of us are fresh and new. But all of us are here because God has set a vision. God has written that vision out in the heavenlies and he's transferred it in the earth and it has been written down and it shall come to pass and you have to determine in your heart i will be part of what god wants to do and so because joseph saw that god said what he meant because jo joseph saw with his own eyes the vision that god has given to him come to pass i recognize that it was really about the preservation of the children of Israel. It was really about the fulfillment of what God has said to Abraham. I will put your seed into uh, a nation for 400 years and then they will come out with much power. At this time when Joseph told them to keep his bones, it was still a lot of hundreds of years to go, you know. At that time, they had not yet started to persecute Israel. But Joseph believed God. And by faith, Isaac, Abraham told Isaac, and Isaac told um, Jacob and Esau about what Abraham told them, how God is going to give them that land that they were in, but they're going to go out for 400 years and come back. And, 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 and Jacob told all of his sons that same story. And Jacob and Joseph captured that story. And Joseph says, my God will certainly bring you all out because he said it to my great-great-grandfather that he was going to let us come in, but he was going to bring us out with much wealth. So he says, in spite of the fact that the Egyptians would love to have my bones because I was one of their great kings, I was one of their great leaders, don't left my bones with them. Take my bones to the promised land. And he says, God will definitely come. Do you believe that God will definitely give us this land? 
Do you believe God will definitely do what he says he will do? Do, God, do you believe that God will, will, will fulfill uh, where it was, it was prophesied that this church was built to be a self vendor for great evangelism? Do you believe that, that revival time assembly will touch the world? Do you believe it? Because God says it. Now, because he says it, it shall come to pass. It may, it may tarry a little bit, but wait patiently. Wait on your knees before God. Wait for it. Wait for it. And whatever he tells you to do, just do it. It may not make sense. Did it make sense? When the great army came against Jehoshaphat in 2 Chronicles chapter 20, that he says, put the worshippers in front and says, I said, Lord, you are God and your mercy endure it forever. You ever see that defeated army yet? Never saw it before. But God, we said, behold, I do a new thing. That was new for them. They didn't see God do it before. But he says, I don't know what to do, but my eyes are fixed on you. So whatever you tell me to do, I'm going to do. So they put the worshipers up front. They put the worshipers up front. And I'll tell you this. I tell the worshipers, same thing. I believe we are in the season where revival time have got to put the worshipers up front. Because they are the ones who are going to start to see the start of the victory. It's the actions when they worship team are together in one accord singing the songs of the Lord under the instruction of the Holy Spirit. That is when you will see the enemy start to get confused. Now when the enemy start to get defeated. But guess what? They need all of the army. They need all of the congregation. They need all of Israel. After God defeated the enemy, everybody had to go collect the spoils. It wasn't just the worshippers. But it doesn't make sense. Everything he tells us to do may not necessarily make sense. There are things that he's telling you about your life, how to deal with certain situations and circumstances that have come up against you, and it don't seem to make sense. But if God tells you to do it, can I encourage you today? Just do what he tells you to do. Just do what he tells you to do and left the rest to him. He can deal with the rest. The enemy come up against Israel. Sorry, Judah. In the same Second Chronicles chapter 20. And when I rehearsed the whole thing in my head, I was like, God, I was just trying to transfer some wealth to the church of Israel. Because at the end of the day, the word of God says, you read it for yourself. They had to spend three days. The enemy was slain. They had to spend three days collecting the spoils. Collecting the spoils. Collecting the spoils. Because you see, when they came against Israel, they came with a whole set of um, supplies and equipment and all of that. Because they were bent that they were going to destroy the people of God. But not when the captain of the Lord's army is in the mess. Not when the captain of the Lord's army is in the mess. And I want to chat, uh, I want to let you know today, I believe that God has taken us revival time into a season of advancement from all year to late last year he said reignite transition advance rta reignite transition advance god is taking us forward but not about us not for us to make a name for ourselves but so he can expand the kingdom of God in the earth. And he has placed us in this specific spot to advance the kingdom of God in this specific 
area where we are strategically placed us, gave us enough space so that as the, the brownies and the blossoms and the guys came together up at Paris, we could accommodate all of them. He knew that they were going to camp up there in the one place to worship. That's why he make us buy the extra chairs and create the extra space. I gave Baza Clark the vision to go and buy this thing that don't look typically like a church. But it's not so much a church, but it's a house of prayer, a place of worship. And once we come, the Spirit of the Lord will dwell. I want Sister Pat to come and, and minister, lead with the, with the worship team. A song that's so fitting with what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. In times like these, we need a Savior. In times like these, we need an anchor. Hallelujah. Be very sure. Be very sure. The anchor holds. You my worship team some some volume there, Brother Pierre. Brother Pierre, give my worship team some volume, please.
Father, this morning, our Christ the solid rock, oh, yes. I stand. Now we place our feet surely upon Christ Jesus, our rock. Because in times like these, oh, we need Jesus. Ah, in times like these, we need Jesus. We need Jesus. So if you are watching us on YouTube or Facebook, are you even here in the sanctuary this morning? And you don't have a sure. You can't say, I'm very sure. My anchor holds on Jesus. Or maybe your walk with God has been a bit rocky in recent times. And you want to establish your foundation again in Jesus. I want to pray for you this morning. Anybody wants us to pray this morning for you? You want to have that solid rock again. Father, this morning we thank you. You look into our hearts. You see our hands that have been raised before you. God, we know, and we hear you say, oh God, that you say what you mean and you mean what you say. And that your vision is true and is sure. Almighty God, I pray today. Almighty God, I pray today. That you will touch each and every one of us today, oh God. I reassure us that our anchor holds 
and grace that solid. This rock is Jesus. Yes, yes he is the one. This rock is Jesus. He's the only one. I'm very sure.